Hi, I'm Jennifer Sir. Welcome to The Sewing Room and our Jobs in Fashion series. Today we're speaking with Chelsea Willingham, who is going to tell us all about the job of product developer. Chelsea's journey into design and development traces back to a childhood shopping trip with her mom. During middle school, she vividly described a pair of shoes she wanted, prompting her to sketch them. Her mother's response, those don't exist, ignited her creative spark. Her master's degree in apparel design specializing in sustainability further refined her creativity. In the years that follow, she honed her skills as a product developer and sustainability professional in the apparel industry. In 2020, her move to San Francisco brought about fresh inspiration. As she acclimated her dog to urban living, Chelsea discovered a glaring gap. In response, she launched Minka and Coco. We're going to learn all about Minka and Coco and about the job of product developer from our guest today, Chelsea Willingham. So I'm excited for you to meet her. Without further ado, here she is. Hi, Chelsea. Welcome to the sewing room. Hi, thank you. Nice to be here. I'm excited to hear about your job of product developer. Can you um, tell us a little bit about your background and how you became a product developer? Yeah, it's it goes way back. Um, it started as a little girl. I my mom was always sewing, and I was always watching her and involved. And she would have me, you know, pin her patterns and cut them out for her. And um, about middle school age, we were going back to school shopping, and my mom was asking me, "Okay, what is, you know, what kind of clothing do you want uh, to start the school year?" and I started describing these things to her and she's like, honey, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, can you, you know, draw me a picture and show me what you're thinking of? So I drew her a picture and she was like, yeah, I've never seen that. Those don't exist. So it was kind of my destiny <laughs> to develop products um, that didn't exist. And that's, yeah, that's just something that I've always enjoyed. And it was very clear from a young age that that was kind of the path I was going to take. Um, what kind of, um, education did you have? So I went and got a degree in apparel design, um, an undergraduate degree. And then I also, after that, got an apparel design master's degree with a focus in sustainability. And what kind of, what kind of jobs were your first kind of jobs that you had? I started out doing, um, like apparel design and some product development, um, and, you know, smaller companies, it's kind of meshed in together. So my first job, you know, I was able to kind of do both. Cool. Um, what exactly does it mean to be a product developer? Yeah, it means you're taking a concept and turning it into a physical product. So normally, you know, you work very closely with designers and they're kind of the ones that come up with that initial concept and the product developers are the ones that take the idea and um, go through the process of creating the product and bringing it to customers. So what does that process look like? It looks like, um, as I mentioned, the designer, they typically will bring you a sketch and then a product developer will turn that into what we call a tech pack. And a tech pack is essentially everything you need to know to make a garment. So that tech pack goes to our factories and the product developer will work with the factories back and forth. We get samples, we review the samples, and then, you know, sometimes three, four, five samples later, we have a product that we can uh, take and sell. Cool. So um, it sounds very similar to a technical designer, but yes. maybe there's more, is there more production involved in that? Are you part, a stronger part of the production process? Yes, for sure. I also have um, some experience as a technical designer and I would say that, you know, once the design is initially created, the technical designer and the product developer are really the ones that are working the closest together. Um, the technical designer is going to work more on specs and fit, and then the product developer will focus more on the construction and um, the design details. 
Cool. Um, what kind of products do you focus on? Right now I'm working for mostly outdoor brands. So it's, it's kind of, you know, lifestyle apparel and outdoor wear. I do um, tops and bottoms and some footwear as well. Very cool. Um, let's see, what, what were my other questions? Um, oh, I wanted to ask you, what are the most important skills that someone needs um, to do this kind of job? Yeah, I would say the most important skill is understanding construction. So coming from a sewing background is extremely beneficial. You have to be able to understand how to put a garment together yourself and pattern making as well is really helpful. Um, Cause most of the time you're communicating to people where English is their second language. So you have to really understand it and be able to communicate it at an elementary level um, to get your products made. What kind of advice would you give someone who is just starting out in product development? I like to tell people if you have the opportunity to work at a smaller design firm to definitely go that route. You just, you really get to have your hand in so many different, you know, categories. I've, I've talked to people that started out working for like a larger company and they were primarily working on ties or men's dress shirts and you know, when you work at a smaller brand, you have the opportunity to work across all the different categories. You can dip into product development, design, and technical design and kind of learn, you know, what really what you enjoy doing and where your skills are best used. Yeah, I think that's great advice because I, I started out as a technical designer. Well, we called it something else back then, but it was a technical designer at Gap and I handled- Oh, yeah. Baby Gap Knits, I think, was what I did. So it was like really specific. I did, I was, because it was baby, I did different products in that line, but it was definitely knits. So um, I learned all about how to how, how all of the knits work, but um, yeah. it was really niche. And I only did my job and I didn't get too much exposure to all of the other other jobs involved. And, um, I think that that's great to work for a small company first. That's really good advice. Yeah, for sure. Um, Am I allowed to ask you a question about absolutely, that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I was curious to know, like, did, you know, as that job was your first job, did that kind of determine your path in your career, um, before you opened the sewing room or were you able to kind of, you know, get into different categories? Well, it really did determine. Um, so my first, my first job was actually, I was, I had my own business making hats. That's what I did coming out of design school. I made hats. I had two different kinds of hats. I made like romantic velvet hats with ribbons. And then I made hats for ravers too. And I've never been to a rave. So it was kind of funny that I am. Uh, nice. <laughs> silly, you know, wild, like teacups that you put on top of your head. And that, um, that was sort of just not sustainable as a teenager understanding. Like, I think I was 19 when I finished um, FIDM. So I didn't really understand anything about business or anything. So a friend of mine worked at Gap and I got a job there. And I was there from like 1993 on and off until 2008, either as an employee or a contractor. And, um, and really I was kind of, just in that world. Um, but I did leave and become self-employed again as a bridal designer. So I was able to sort of, because I made my own dress, I knew how, how um, sample making went and how, you know, how to develop things that way. Um, and I did everything. So I did, I did everything from the pattern making to the sewing, to the, you know, the sales and marketing and, um, uh, and it, through my fitting experience is really where, where I got the most experience, um, in that. And then from, from there, I moved on to teaching. So, um, once I, once I had that experience and I knew, I knew more than other people did about, <laughs> I was able to teach at the college level. So that's sort yeah. of how my, my job evolved. 
Wow. There, we have so many similarities. There's so many different things I could dive into. I also made my own wedding dress and did the pattern making and the couture techniques and, um, you know, spent eight months on this dress. And I've also taught at the college level. So um, it sounds like there's so many things we could talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I decided that I like the path of, of teaching better than like, trying to develop, um, develop products. So that for me, the education was, was what, where I excelled at. And it sounds like you're, you really enjoy, um, like developing the products. So that's really awesome. Yeah. I was curious how your, you know, path kind of evolved from starting out in knitwear. Cause I've kind of learned once you find your niche and you have that initial job, you know, as long as you're working for someone else that kind of determines your path and you kind of like, I never would have thought I would be working in outdoor apparel. Like that is not, that is not my aesthetic. That is not, you know, what I normally wear. Um, but I enjoy it and it's, you know, kind of how my path was carved. And, um, so it's always interesting to talk to other people, you know, like obviously baby knitwear was probably not your favorite thing in the world. to I, mean, I, didn't, ha- I didn't even think I liked kids at the time. I mean, <laughs> I was never going to ever have children. And, um, and then we would have these baby fit models and the fit models were so adorable that I decided I like kids. <laughs> Someday <laughs> would have a child. Um, but from baby gap, I think I went to women's knits and then from women's knits, I ended up doing, um, I helped launch um, Gap Body and I did um, women's loungewear and then I oversaw the um, w- men's and women's loungewear and went to all of those fittings. But it was like sleepwear and um, underwear, <laughs> you know, so not like, like I don't lounge around the house all the time. It's not something that I yeah. would necessarily, and I wasn't designing any of it. I was just doing the technical design for it, but I understood yeah. how it all went together. <laughs> That's amazing. I, my, my favorite underwear is actually from Gap Body. So they, love have, it. they have a good underwear. I still buy it too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not great. making my own. <laughs> yeah. So I want to hear, now I want to hear more about Minka and Coco, which is your own personal brand. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. It's, Once again, it's just such an interesting story how these things come about. I am originally from Alabama and in the middle of the pandemic, my husband and I moved to San Francisco and we brought our dog with us. Our dog that was used to having her own backyard was now relying on me for walks three times a day. Um, And this was like completely new world to me. I'm like, how do, how do women especially take their dogs for walks in a city setting. Like, where do you put all your things? You don't want to take a purse. Um, You know, you have a phone, you have keys, and then you have all your dog's essentials that you need to take with you. So I just immediately, like the first week of living in the city, I was like, I need some sort of bag to hold all these things in. And it didn't exist. I started looking for it and I was like, well, that's not a problem. I'll just make one (laughs) because that's, you know, what, what we do. So I made one and it, you know, filled the need for a year and a half or so. And through that time I started, you know, other people started noticing it. Oh, where did you buy that? That's really cool. Like I I really need something like that. And, um, I was aware that, there was a need and interest from other people. So I started sampling and I've spent three years developing this product, uh, this dog walking product, and um, I'm about to launch. So that's kind of the story of how this all came about. Wow. So what's the product made of? So it's made of a recycled polyester material. Um, It's really durable and easy to clean. And then I also have a collar and leash that's it looks kind of like a faux leather, but it's um, coated nylon, um, so it's completely waterproof and easy to clean. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, what is the best way to, for people to learn about um, to learn more about Minka and Coco? I'm on um, pretty much all the social media accounts, so 
um, you can find me there. And then I have a website, taminkaandcoco.com. And yeah, I'm, I'm just launching. So there's a lot of information about the brand and the story behind the brand and um, really trying to educate the customers on the products. So you can really learn a lot. I feel like just from following us on Instagram or uh, whatever your social media of choice is. And you're doing a Kickstarter too, right? Yes, that is correct. So by the time we post this video, the Kickstarter should be up and running. Yes. Next week is, well, the week after next is the launch. Okay, great. So I'll make sure I put all the launch um, information and the Kickstarter information in the show notes here so people can go and check you out. Um, mm -hmm. Are you currently available to work as a product development consultant? Yes. So half of my time I have spent working on Minka and Coco and the other half of my time, or really three fourths of my time is Minka and Coco and half of my time is my day job. So I work as a, a product development and sustainability consultant in the apparel world. So um, I love working with smaller brands, especially, and um, yeah, I'm available. So reach out. Yeah. So, well, let's, let's do a little backpedal here. I want to hear more about what a sustainability consultant does. Yeah. So my niche is in apparel, obviously. And, um, there's so many, um, you know, different ways that it can present itself. But for me, um, I primarily work on materials and treatments on fabrics. So, I'm working with different brands to make sure that they're using, you know, great materials that are going to withstand, you know, wear and tear and last a long time. Cause that's one element of sustainability. And then, you know, I also work and make sure that our factories are ethically, you know, they're on the up and up and, um, the products that are being made there, you know, we're not contributing to a lot of waste in the environment and those types of things. Great. That's really important right now. Yeah. And yeah. there's so many laws that California keeps coming out with and other states are following around chemicals in clothing. So um, that's been really interesting to learn about and um, be a part of. That's great. Um, what's the best way for people to connect with you? You can find me on LinkedIn or I have a website as well um, for my consulting business. So um, that's chelsearay.us. And I'm sure that you'll also share that link with people if they're interested in working together. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. And um, Chelsea, it was so nice to hear about the job of product developer. I'm very curious I'm still curious about what um, what else is involved with product developing. It seems like you'd have to work with factories and and um, there's probably a lot of communication involved as well, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah, factories, that is that is probably 75% of the job is, you know, working, communicating via email with factories. Awesome. Well, thanks yeah. again for being here. And um, I look forward to seeing your Kickstarter for Minka and Coco. Thank you so much, Jennifer. This is really fun. Awesome. And I'll have, um, I'll do a blog post as well. So people can see more of your work. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye. That was a great conversation with Chelsea Willingham. I'm so excited that she was able to tell us a little bit more about the job of product developer. Some key points that she made um, when um, talking about the job were that product developers are people who work with the pattern maker, the technical designer, and the factory to create the vision that the designer has in mind um, the, for the product that they're trying to produce. So it is a collaborative effort, and the product developer is kind of like a little bit like a product or project manager who works with all these different um, components of the job to make, to bring together this product that's going to get produced in the factory. Um, it also really helps to have a background in sewing and pattern making so that you can communicate 
how the garment or product is is put together um, with people who may have English as a second language. So if you're able to communicate the actual product construction, um, then the language becomes a little bit less important and you can communicate exactly how it's supposed to be put together. And finally, um, for people just starting out in this career, she suggests that you work at a small company so you can um, learn and get more exposure to different parts in, of the business as well as the different categories involved. So um, like we were talking about, um, in many companies, you have tops and bottoms. Um, you may have um, different types of clothing. You may have like um, in swimwear, for instance, you may just have different brands that you work with when you're producing these things. So it's really important to get an overview of what um, what a small how a small company works, and then you can kind of dip your toes into different parts of the business as well. So um, I think that um, is a very good piece of advice. Uh, working for a big company, you're you basically work on a lot of product that's very similar in and you don't get to put your toes in the other parts of the business very often. Um, I think that was very helpful um, advice and I look forward to um, seeing how Minka and Coco come together with her Kickstarter, which I will link all of that information down in the show notes. In the meantime, if you're interested in our fashion studies program, please visit our website at the sewing room alameda.com backslash fashion hyphen studies and please give us a thumbs up and subscribe it really helps us out